Hey guys, and welcome to How to Gastro. So in today's video, we'll be discussing what is an alkaline phosphatase blood test, which is also commonly known as an ALP blood test. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the alkaline phosphatase blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders this blood test for you. So an alkaline phosphatase blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory or hospital. So no special preparation is needed for an alkaline phosphatase blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. During the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a gold top or SST blood tube. So this blood is then sent off to the laboratory where it is analyzed and resulted. So what is alkaline phosphatase or ALP? So alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme found in various tissues throughout the body with the highest concentrations in the liver, the bones, the kidneys, the bile ducts, and in the placenta of pregnant women, as it supports fetal growth and development. So ALP plays a key role in the process of breaking down proteins in the body and is also involved in various physiological functions, such as bone formation, liver function, and digestive health. So in bone formation, ALP is crucial in the mineralization of bones it helps convert inorganic pyrophosphate, a natural inhibitor of mineralization, into phosphate, which promotes bone growth. In the liver, ALP is involved in the transport of bile. So the enzyme is particularly abundant in the bile ducts, and elevated levels can indicate a blockage in these ducts, or even liver damage. So ALP is also important in digestive health, as it also contributes to the breakdown of fats in the digestive system, aiding in nutrient absorption. So from this definition, we see why this enzyme is so important. It is found in various tissues throughout the body, such as the liver, the bones, the kidneys, the bile ducts, and in the placenta of pregnant women. And it's involved in various functions and plays a series of key roles in bone formation, proper liver function, as well as being very important in the digestive health of the individual themselves. So now that we know what alkaline phosphatase is, let's take a closer look at what the alkaline phosphatase blood test is all about. So what is an alkaline phosphatase blood test? So an alkaline phosphatase blood test is a diagnostic tool used to measure the amount of the enzyme alkaline phosphatase in the blood. So as we mentioned in the previous slide, this enzyme is primarily found in the liver, bones, kidneys, and bile ducts, and in the placenta of pregnant women. The alkaline phosphatase blood test is often part of a routine health checkup and is used to diagnose and monitor various health conditions. So what are the normal ranges of ALP in the blood? So normal ALP levels are measured in units per litre of blood and in adults usually range from 30 to 120 units per litre. In children and adolescents, high levels are usually normal here due to active bone growth. And in cases of pregnancy, higher levels can also be normal due to the placental levels of ALP. So now that we know what the normal range looks like, let's take a closer look at some abnormal ranges of ALP in the blood. So abnormally high levels of alkaline phosphatase can indicate several conditions, as the ALP enzyme is found in various tissues throughout the body, with particularly high concentrations in the liver, bile ducts and bones. So elevated ALP levels can be associated with Number one, liver disease. So here we can have several pathological processes, including cholestasis, hepatitis, and liver cancer or metastatic liver disease. So in cholestasis, we have a blockage of bowel flow, 
and this can be caused by conditions like a bowel duct obstruction, primary biliary cirrhosis, or primary sclerosing cholangitis, which can all cause elevated ALP levels to show up on a blood test. We can also have hepatitis, which is the inflammation of the liver, and this will also lead to higher ALP levels on a blood report. Also affecting the liver, we can have liver cancer or metastatic liver disease. And here we have tumors in the liver or cancers that have spread to the liver, which can elevate ALP levels on a blood test. At number two, the second cause of abnormally high ALP levels on a blood report can be due to bone disorders. So in bone disorders, we have three pathological processes, which includes bone growth or healing, Paget's disease, or osteomalacia and rickets. So in bone growth or healing, we have conditions like fractures or normal bone growth in children and adolescents, which can also increase the ALP levels in a blood test. In Packett's disease, this is a chronic disorder that can result in enlarged and misshapen bones, leading to higher ALP levels. And in osteomalacia and rickets, we have softening of the bones due to a vitamin D deficiency, which can cause elevated ALP levels as well. So continuing with causes, coming in at number three, we can have a bile duct obstruction. So gallstones, tumors, or inflammation in the bile ducts can all lead to a significant increase in ALP. At number four, we have certain cancers. So cancers that also spread to the bones or the liver can also elevate the ALP levels. And this is also because, remember, ALP is usually abundant in the bones and the liver. So any cancers that affect either the bones or the liver will also increase this ALP level. At number five, we have hyperparathyroidism. So overactivity of the parathyroid glands can also cause high ALP levels due to increased bone turnover. At number six, we have pregnancy. So it's normal for ALP levels to rise during pregnancy, especially in the third trimester. And this is due to the placental production of ALP to support fetal growth and development. At number seven, we have infections. So some infections, particularly those affecting the liver, like hepatitis, A, B, or C, or any infections that may affect the bones can also cause elevated levels of ALP. And at number eight, we have certain medications. So certain drugs like anticonvulsants or those affecting the liver can also lead to elevated ALP levels on a blood report. So now that we've covered all the reasons for abnormally high ALP levels, let's take a closer look at what causes abnormally low ALP levels on a blood report. So abnormally low levels of alkaline phosphatase are less common but can also be indicative of certain medical conditions or deficiencies. So here's a look at some potential causes of low ALP levels. So coming in at number one, we have hypophosphatasia. So this is a rare genetic disorder characterized by defective bone mineralization due to the low ALP activity, and it can lead to weak or soft bones, premature tooth loss, and in severe cases, can be quite life-threatening. At number two, we have malnutrition. So severe malnutrition, particularly in cases where there is deficiency in essential nutrients like protein, zinc, magnesium, or vitamin B6, can also lead to reduced ALP levels. Coming in at number three, we have a vitamin D deficiency. So low vitamin D levels can also cause low ALP, particularly in children, as it affects bone formation and mineralization. At number four, we have hypothyroidism. So an underactive thyroid can also slow down the metabolism in the body, leading to lower ALP levels on a blood report. At number five, we have anemia. So in cases of severe anemia, especially when related to a vitamin B12 deficiency or a folate deficiency, this can result in lower than normal ARP levels.
Continuing with causes for abnormally low ALP levels, at number six, we have postmenopausal women. So in some cases, postmenopausal women might exhibit low ALP levels due to hormonal changes that affect the bone turnover in these individuals. At number seven, we have a magnesium deficiency. So magnesium is a cofactor for many enzymes, including ALP, which means a deficiency in magnesium can lead to a decreased ALP activity and abnormally low ALP levels on a blood report. At number eight, we have Wilson's disease. So Wilson's disease is a rare inherited disorder that leads to excessive accumulation of copper in the body, particularly in the liver, the brain, and other vital organs. And this can also result in lower than normal ALP levels on a blood report. At number nine, we have celiac disease. So untreated celiac disease leads to malabsorption of nutrients in the intestines, which can also cause lower than normal ALP levels due to nutrient deficiencies. At number 10, we have pernicious anemia. So this is a type of anemia that is caused by the body's inability to absorb vitamin B12, leading to reduced red blood cell production and low ALP levels as well. And finally, the 11th cause, which is genetic factors. So in some individuals, genetic factors may naturally lead to lower than normal ALP levels without any associated illness. So the take home message. So as we have just seen, the ALP blood test is a crucial diagnostic tool that helps healthcare providers assess and monitor various aspects of the individual's health, particularly related to liver and bone diseases. So it can detect diseases early, guide treatment decisions, and monitor the effectiveness of ongoing treatments, making it an essential part of routine health checks and specific diagnostic evaluations. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with some of your friends in the medical community who you think might find this useful. So if you want to encourage me to do even more or to say thanks for all the free information you've received on my channel today, you can say thank you by buying me a coffee. So the link for buying me a coffee can be found in the description box below. Take care and have an awesome day further. Bye for now.